Luke Thomas for SB Nation here in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, next to the owner and head coach of American Kickboxing Academy, Javier Mendez. Javier, thank you for joining us. All right, so let's start with the bad news first. Habib Nurmagomedov, uh, he got injured. Can you tell us exactly what happened? Well, you know, he was sparring. Uh, he had great sparring, and, uh, you know, no contact was actually made. He had took a step back. As he stepped back, his knee kind of went out on him, you know, and... Is it the same 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 injury? It's the same knee, and the thing of it is, when he came to training, he was, I would say, about ninety percent. So we were trying to work around the injury, that the surgery, not the injury, because it wasn't injured. We were trying to work around the surgery, and uh, you know, it just it didn't hold. So uh, we're told five months he could be out. Is that what you've heard? Like, wh what have you? What do you know about his? possible return to competition or even training at this point mm, you know I don't know yet because I've been here in Vegas all day so I was told originally from the one doc in San Jose that if they had surgery with good rehab he can be back into training within two months so I'm thinking two to three months of rehab and then he can start training so I think five months would be about right have you had a chance to speak to him and if so I, I, I would imagine he's probably pretty down about the whole incident I haven't had a chance to speak to him but he's hundred percent down very, very, very disappointed. So it's interesting that this happened in light of some of the comments that UFC President Dana White had made about, you know, you, and I know you addressed it previously about the Stone Age thing. Is this validation for those comments? Is this just a freak accident? How, how does this work? Well, you know, it's, it's a freak accident. And as far as Dana's comments, he didn't, he didn't mean anything like that. All he's saying is that we as a sport need to watch our fighters and be more careful. And we need to update ourselves and educate ourselves to become better, better coaches, you know, for, for our fighters. Because, you know, without a healthy fighter, nobody wins, you know. So... Dana's comments weren't meant as a, as a bad, mad uh, remark on AKA. It was just in general. Us coaches need to be careful. It's funny to me because I don't know that anyone in the industry, even the best coaches, does anyone know what best practices are in MMA to avoid injuries? Like Dean Lister has famously said, if you want to reduce injuries in jiu-jitsu, just stop takedowns. But you can't stop takedowns. You have to train them. You have to do them. So what, what can we realistically do to reduce the number of injuries for all fighters? Well, one of the things we're doing and we have been doing is – I mean, I do little simple things as this. When I ask you to spar, if you have problems, like I'll see you assist, if you have problems with your girlfriend and it's really bothering you and you don't let me know that, you know, that's not bad. That's a good thing for me because I want to know. If you're having problems, that's going to dictate whether I'm going to allow you to spar or not. If you got a little injury, I want to know about your injury because if that injury is to the effect where it's going to affect what I want you to do, then maybe I'll just have your box or, you know what I mean? I need to know everything about these guys because if I don't know, then I'm going to put them in a situation, their egos get in the way, and before you know it, all of a sudden, boom, there's an injury because they didn't tell you what's going on. So I make sure my guys talk to me, you know, and I say, you guys need to let me know what's going on. Daniel Cormier is now going to face Anthony Rumble Johnson, UFC 187. It's a hell of an opportunity for Daniel Cormier. I did a little digging, and if you look at, I think, almost to the number, the, the way that Anthony Johnson has been taken down in the UFC anyway, it's been through the clinch, uh, where obviously Daniel Cormier excels. When you look at this matchup, is Daniel Cormier a worse matchup for Anthony or is John Jones a worse matchup for Anthony? Well, you know, for me, I, I, you know, John Jones is such a great fighter that, that I think John Jones is just a, it's a, it's a bad matchup for everybody in general. Um, but I think for Daniel Cormier, I think this is a better matchup for us per se. So Anthony Johnson for us is a better matchup than John Jones, I'd say. Now, are you concerned about the prep time? I know you had the fight coming up in NOLA in June, but this is a little bit of a, what do you want to call it, expedited timeline. Do you believe he'll have the kind of preparation required? I mean, he, listen, he's the guy who's been competing all of his life, but is this a little too much too soon? It's not a little uh, too much too soon, only because he's already training for two weeks after. And the one major part that's here that wasn't here last time, Cain Velasquez. He's got his main training partner. That right there is the biggest, biggest thing for him, and he has him. What, what kind of difference? Help us understand, like, day to, week in for a full week, what does he get in terms of training with King Velasquez? Obviously, he's a good fighter. I don't mean that. But, like, for, a, for, a, for a seven days, what can he provide Daniel Cormier? Well, he can provide Daniel so many different looks and, and the pushing that he does for him. No one can push Daniel like Kane. No one. No, there's no one that can push anybody like Kane. So having a Kane push you on a day out, and I'm not talking about hard and not necessarily going hard, but the push, the technical aspect of what Kane brings to the table is incredible. And his health, by the way, he's ready to go. There's no issues lingering. I know he's got the fight looming with Verdun, but give us a sense here. He's, he's fully training, 100%, no issues, yeah? No, nah, Kane's 100% healthy. The one good thing for me that was a saving grace is Tony Castro. 
Tony Castro's come in and, and he works on Kane all the time. He's a strength and conditioning coach and he rehabs Kane. He makes sure that Kane is on point and if Kane's a little burned out, he'll tell Kane, take the day off. Or if he'll, you know, he'll tell me, Tony's great. Uh, ever since I've had Tony, I feel so comfortable. Tony is fantastic. I was going to say, how, how long has he been a part of the camp? Because it seems like Cain Velasquez, he has the ability to do things that heavyweights can't, but maybe that's a blessing and a curse, right? Because he can push himself so far, that can be too far. How long has Tony been working with Velasquez? Uh, Tony's just been working with us just recently, so it hasn't been long at all. Uh, and he, he is definitely a blessing. Definitely a blessing. I wish I had more of him. All right, so Luke Rockhold obviously had a, I don't know, would you say the victory over Machida, best win of Luke Rockhold's career? Not just because of who Machida is, but the way in which he was dispatched. I would say it was the best victory of his career for sure. I didn't know how that fight was going to go. Luke knew more than I did. I was like thinking, okay, we can win that fight. But Machida's such a great fighter. I thought whoever screws up, that fight's going to be theirs. And, you know, unfortunately when Luke hit him, you know, with the forearm and he, and, and he hit him, knocked him down, and I think that was the first mistake. And, and uh, Machida went down as a result of that. I think that was the first mistake. So it could have gone the other way around, the way I felt. I mean, Machida's still a great fighter. and. Uh, I was shocked. I'm not, I was going to tell you, oh, yeah, no, we expect, no, Luke expected that. I did not. I expected we could win. I expected we could lose. But I expected whoever screwed up first. And it was Machida. He got hit behind the back of the head with the elbow, not the elbow, the forearm, and dropped him. Then it's all Luke's fight from there. How would you characterize his maturation? Like from the Bisping fight, we saw a guy who was patient, entries were clean, wasn't in there. Like in the Jacare fight, he won it, of course, but it was a crazy kind of brawl relative to some of the way he's performing now. Now everything seems so surgical. When, when did he turn that corner? How did he get here? Well, <laughs> Luke's great at analyzing his own fights and getting better on his own. Only thing I added to him, I said, Luke, I need you to be relaxed. Everything you're saying is fine, but I need you to relax. I don't need you to be rushing. Relax, stay calm, stay relaxed. He goes, Hop, I am relaxed. I go, no, you're not. And I said, take a look at this particular fighter, and you tell me if, if you're as relaxed as him. He comes back, he goes, okay, I get it, you're right. So from that point, he comes into the Bisping fight, more relaxed than ever, and he tells me after, hey, Hop, what do you think now? I said, you were relaxed. I go, but you know what? Now you got Machida. I need you to be a little bit more relaxed for me. And guess what he does? Did it again. He's amazing. Do you think uh, he still wants the match with Keenan Cornelius in sport jiu-jitsu? Is that still on the, on the front burner at all? No, I, I, don't, I don't think that is on the front burner for him. I, I think his, his eye is set on that big prize, and he's, he's kind of looking for, hoping for Madison Square Garden and uh, him and Weidman to do a great show there, if it gets approved in New York, and if God's prevented the UFC, meaning if they're, they think that's a great fight, then they'll put it on there. Do you think Weidman... Listen, MMA is crazy, but all things being equal, do you like Weidman's chances against Vitor to advance? I love Weidman's chances. I mean, that guy's never lost, and he's got that attitude. He's a great fighter, and uh, so, is, so is Vitor, but, but Weidman isn't going to break, and I think he's going to keep coming. Outside of getting KO'd, Weidman's coming. So how, in your mind, does Luke Rockhold beat Chris Weidman? What does he have to do to, to take those things away from Chris Weidman? Well, it's just my opinion, of course. I'm the coach. Obviously, people are going to differ, but I feel on the stand-up, we have the edge there. Uh, he's got the wrestling, and there's nothing we can do about that. He's got the wrestling, but how dangerous is it going to be for Weidman to take Luke down? Luke, Luke's a wizard on the ground. He's, he's, you can't prepare for Luke with other ground guys. He's different. He's one of a kind, so we'll see what, what, uh, what, what he can do with, with, uh, with Luke on the ground and how comfortable he's going to feel taking Luke to the ground. That's going to be the test right there. When he takes Luke down, how comfortable is he going to be down there? I don't know. Uh, personal question for me, real fast, before we let you go. Is Buchecha still training with AKA when, he, when, we, when we guys bring him in for camps? Well, Buchecha is the check mat, and Leandro Vieira is the check, one of the check mat founders. So they're like family. So Buchecha does whatever he can to come and help Kane. So I'm expecting that Buchecha is going to come help Kane uh, to get prepared, to, to give that added, added uh, flair with the jiu-jitsu. Yes, for sure. All right, so we're here in Las Vegas. Before we let you go, we got to ask Mayweather Pacquiao, uh, you're a, as a credential as a combat athlete as it comes, who do you like and why? Well, I like Mayweather. Uh, you know, I think he's the greatest there's ever been. And uh, you just got to watch that guy. He just makes no mistakes. And, and, and if he did make a mistake, he corrects it. You know, he's, he's just a great fighter. Do you think he stops Pacquiao or does it go the full distance? I don't think he stops Pacquiao. I don't think he stopped anybody in a while and I don't think he, he his goal is to stop someone I think his, his goal is to dissect him to take him a piece by piece that's what I think he does I think he's the best at it Javier Mendez thank you so much for your time thank you